All right, all right, all right. What's going on, guys? Told you what's going on. 40 seconds to go. We are going to stream on this beautiful Thursday morning. I mean afternoon. I mean evening. Wherever you are. Whoever you are. Whatever you are. What's going on, everyone? Afternoon Addiction, told you that's so awesome to hear. So awesome to hear. Let's get some stream hype in here. Some pre chat hype. Treasure add viewers 100. I feel like a fish out of water now. Doubloons for everybody hanging out in stream. Pre chat or pre stream in the chat. Whoa, webcam. That is the back of my Cintiq right there. In case you guys ever wondered what that looks like. Here's my face. There we go. Let's see, let's see. Uh, Autofocus off. I'm gonna move back over here. Choo! All right, all right. Let's get that Cintiq out of the way for everyone. What's going on, everybody? What's going on? Somebody asked. I can't see your name. Hey, sir. What font is this? What font is what? Frames, what's going on? Thanks for the internet points. Of course, of course. Aether, do you mean this cooldown sketch font? Or... Maybe? This font right here. Oh, God! This font right here is Fish Fingers. It's awesome. It's, uh, it's a very, very dirty font. But yeah, all the stuff pre-stream is... All this stuff is Fish Fingers. Fish fingers there and fish fingers there. It's all fish fingers. It's a pretty sweet font. It's what I think I'm using around most of my channel. It's all fish fingers. All right, guys, I'm gonna drop. Just in case you guys missed it yesterday, this was the cooldown sketch we did, based on ideas from chat. A dog scorpion, a dragon parrot cat, and a badass banana. So if you guys hang out till the end of the stream, around 5 p.m., usually a little bit before that, I'll start doing a cooldown sketch where I'll take suggestions from you guys in the audience and draw whatever crazy-ass idea you could come up with. Uh, this was yesterday, which was our Dogorpion. This was, it was awesome. Damage Wall, what's going on, dude? Damage Wall, I gotta tell you, after you started talking about making uh, stream bots yesterday, you got me thinking, man. You got me thinking. Uh, I was talking to Dan a bit after the stream of like the possibilities of what uh, like making stream bots myself. Dragon Parrot Cat should definitely be a new Skyhook character. XNF, that would be awesome. Imagine, it's just like a mutant. It's like the clone of Jade turned into a mutant. Its grappling hook is its tongue. It's just like a complete beast. But I don't know. I think the badass banana might be a great unlockable character. Imagine. What would be his grappling hook? I don't even know. I don't even know XNF. We're going to pull up into Unity here. Uh, so, yesterday we worked on... If you guys are just joining the stream, you don't know what all this is about. Uh, the next mount. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, imagine the character... Imagine Jade mounting a dragon parrot cat. How weird would that look? It would be Jade on a Jade. But speaking of the next mount, we are going to have to work on the next mount sometime soon. Too much Twitch bots. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now, I want to make, make a Twitch bot game. Like I want to make my own mini game for the twitch channel so we're, hopefully once things cool down a little bit with skyhook we'll get to work on some of that maybe just do it live on stream that would be super fun but uh, yeah, you guys got me addicted you guys got me addicted to twitch uh twitch chat stuff daniel banana mount you better believe it you better believe it when you the a banana comes out of the treasure chest and you think oh you could just throw this and slip and fall but nope you ride that shit you ride that banana to valhalla um so if you guys are just joining us, we are working on a game called Skyhook. It's a game that I'm working on all by my lonesome. It's a game where you fight with grappling hooks. It's out now on Steam Early Access. And we're adding Twitch integration to the game. Damage Ball, I took your idea. Oh no, I mean, I wanted to do it because you were doing it. So I thought we could both do it. That would be awesome. Because you said you were going to make like battleships or something. So I could make something else. Um, so yesterday we started adding Twitch integration. So let me show you guys some cool stuff. Um, I started improving the, let me open a scene here, so 
so it's, still, it's not fully integrated yet, but, 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 I started adding the little uh, racing thing. We got I got to work on that after the stream yesterday, so I'll show you guys what that looks like. Let's open up Visual Studio. Here we go, and here we go, and here we go. All right. Uh, Q show on chat message on user vote. Okay, so this is not being called anywhere. So I'm just gonna call it here on Q. Or sorry, if input dot get key down key code and we'll do uh, W. Then we're going to create the HUD. Let me show you guys what this looks like. It's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. It's not counting the votes yet, but I'll show you guys what it's like. So we're going to start a game here. We're not going to get any players for whatever reason. Winner ID, nobody won. Alright, let's try that again. I think this debug is off, but I'll create the HUD. So check this out, guys. Made this yesterday. Now the little icons will race across to the finish line, uh, depending on people's votes for power-ups. And when it gets to the end, the power-up will trigger. So hold on, I need to add a little note here. Create test match data. Gotta remember to zoom in on my Visual Studio. Oh, just remember, just remembered. So we're gonna add, we're gonna plug all that stuff in. We're gonna plug this uh, HUD into our actual game. So here we had our user votes thing yesterday. So on user vote, and this gets a message every time a uh, every time someone votes for something. So what we need is two things. We need we're gonna need a trigger to start the race HUD, or we'll just call it the power up race. And um, pushing votes to the HUD, right? Oops. So on user vote, we have this add vote method. And what we were doing before is we were adding it to a dictionary. Um, I guess we're still going to do that because we're going to make sure no user is voting twice. So user votes dot add, and here we're also going to push it to the HUD. Uh, we're not going to need to get the most popular vote anymore, so we can get rid of all of this. We could comment that out. This might become useful later. Uh, trigger void power up, create racer HUD. So what actually, let's see, Twitch HUD. Twitch power up HUD. Uh, does it have any methods for, or go on vote for type. This gets called right now here on update. Cool. So we're going to say on chat message, add vote user type, and then we're going to push that to the HUD. So we're going to say the type is some type. You like the icon widow? Yeah, awesome, Toja, thanks. Yeah, it makes it feel a lot more lively. Uh, so on vote for type, we're going to push some power up, and then we're going to increment the votes. No, we don't need to do this anymore. We don't need to do this anymore. Yeah, because it's going to increment on the actual icon. You could ask the streamer to put in their stream delay in the menu to let you figure out how much rewarding to give the chat. Ah, that's a really good idea, Rain. That's a really good idea. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Really good, really good idea. Let's write that down. Oh, actually, I'm going to put this in our notes doc. Um. So, all right, on vote for type, we're going to receive a vote and we're going to push the HUD. So, yeah, let's test it out. Let's do a quick test match. So I'll just create the HUD myself with W since we don't have a trigger yet. So, oops. We're going to erase this because now we're going to actually do it from votes. Actually, we'll keep this just in case. So, Q, W to create, and Q to uh, push it. But I won't push it, I'll let you guys push it. 
so we're going to maximize first. I also changed up the countdown a little bit in the beginning. Um, I felt like uh, the, I mean, we talked about it a little bit before on stream too, like the little countdown thing to say 60 seconds to go. Uh, it felt like it um, wasn't really contrasting with the menu very much. And it was also tough to see, like I saw people join the stream and saying, how do I join? I didn't feel like it was apparent enough. And I don't think we could have made it as apparent by having it on top of the player join screen like that. So I kind of decided to push it to the limit. So first and foremost, we have this little placeholder button here. So now the streamer joins the game and then has to hit this button. So we've got a little placeholder, shitty little button here. So I'm going to hit that button and the countdown's going to start. So if you guys are hanging out in stream, type play to in chat to join. Uh, oh, almost got a typo there, Rames. Got a typo. Got one in, cool. Got two, three. Oh no, is that font shrinking? That font got really tiny. I think that's my fault. Cool, we got three into the queue so far. Ten seconds to go. All right, and I didn't do the fade out. Totally forgot about that. So let's do fade out countdown overlay. All right, so we got Rames as Blue Jade. We got Toja as Yellow Runa and XNF as Blue Finn. I'll hop in here as Anara. The invite Twitch chat button is still there. So hide Twitch chat button. If no Twitch, if countdown done. If count that done, yeah. Here we go. We're gonna do three live deathmatch as usual. Check this out, guys. I made some other changes to the main menu as well. So you remember in the past, this menu used to always fade to each other menu. That's not what I wanted, right? If you notice from the rest of the menu, it's all very like you move up and down through the screens. So I really wanted this. So you look, you go, you're kind of like you're looking at this table, and the map is down here. The special options are over here. And the team selection is over here. So I was finally able to put that into the game last night uh, using Dootweed, which is an awesome, awesome tool. So we're going to do a three live deathmatch. Team's off. We're going to head to... Kingsfall. Alright, it's me, it's XNF, it's Raves, and it's Tojo. up a shield here. X and F taking everybody out. Do tweet. Yeah, Dan. Ah, oh, told you he takes me out from behind. Oh, everyone dies there. It's just me and X and F could go. He gets confused by that treasure chest. Doesn't know if he wants it. Oh, an accident. Oh, I totally forgot. We were going to test the global power up, right? I got so into the match. First, we'll give XNF some points. XNF, congrats. And then we'll do a rematch so I can actually test the HUD, which I totally forgot we were testing. All right, let's do this again. We hit W. All right, now you guys can vote. For which power up you want to activate. Exclamation slow for cannons. We got a vote for cannons, but it didn't register, damn it. Let's see what's going on here. The cannons vote didn't register. Received vote cannons. Oh crap, it's bombs. Oh man, my bad. Replacing it to cannons. That's totally my fault. 
Uh... Let's reorganize this. Received vote. Some vote. By user. Twitch is throttling you for spam. Yeah. And the good thing is the game will do, do it too, so you can't actually vote twice until it refreshes. It'll clear the list. It'll clear the list after the event gets triggered. So we could say clear votes, HUD controller.hide, and then we can make an enumerator, show HUD, or um, start HUD. I'm going to say yield return new wait four seconds. So it'll wait three seconds and then it'll start again. Actually, you know what we'll do? We're going to recycle it here. Object pool dot recycle HUD controller. And we'll start all over again just to be safe for now. And we'll do that here. Start coroutine. Start HUD. And we'll just do that on start so I don't have to keep creating it myself. And this will be if. Who actually, who should be calling this? Twitch manager, on user chat. All right, what we can do for now is just do it here on start. Uh, if we have Twitch has Twitch channel, then we'll just start the HUD. What's up, guys? It's the best invention since bacon. Oh, man, Daniel, I don't know. Bacon's pretty good. Matches. So the match is active. Start the HUD. Oh, you know what we can do? This is a, yeah, okay, this is a thingy thing, a singleton, so we can just do it on start. So we'll go to our game controller, go to our ready. So this is where the game starts. So here we'll say, uh, Twitch match controller uh, start coroutine start uh, wait what I meant to do public void start HUD we're gonna call this uh, create HUD uh, a bunch of really bad method names here uh, redo HUD. And then we'll call that in the game controller. Start HUD. Oh man, so yesterday we were talking about I was thinking about how to improve the um, the battle thing. I think I have an idea now. What if it's like you're trying to buy an airship for a battle or something like that, or you're betting you're betting on airships and, or something like that, and then you see if they, or you're betting on I don't know horses. You're betting on. You're betting on yeah. You're betting on like ships in a race or something. Or like you're trying to buy a ba an airship for a battle maybe. 
All right, and then we want to go over to our Twitch Joint Controller. So in Countdown done, and it recycles the view. Here's End Countdown. So we're not going to do all that. We're just going to do... We're just going to do countdown view dot canvas group do fade. I'm going to say zero and zero point three seconds. All right. Damn damage vol. Damn X and F. You guys got a lot of doubloons. So many doubloons. Reams, this channel is like Copycat Central. What do you mean? Hot air balloon around the world? Oh, that would be awesome. Like, how far do you get around the world before you crash? Wait, damage wall, that's what you were going to do? All right. So we'll have the thing showing. Oh yeah, we want to hide the button as well, right? So I think I don't even have a reference to that button right now. So we'll say Twitch join controller. Oh gosh, Twitch join controller. Here it is. Say public join button. Uh, Twitch start button. Rams, you've been here three evenings. Everyone is jumping on each other's ideas. It's nice. <laughs> okay. Sounds good to me. Oh, no, Damage Vault. I didn't mean uh, with my bot game. No, no, no. I meant for the Ankhbot thing. Um, so me and Dan were talking. We were talking about uh, the Ankhbot is kind of... What, what's it called? Um, like the battle thing doesn't really make sense right now in terms of the doubloons and stuff. Yeah, you should still make your bot minigame. You should totally still do that. Mine's a little, whatever I make will be totally different. I promise. All right. So we're going to move this because this is just showing chat. So I'm going to change this log over here to add vote. User voted for some power up. That's much better. Uh, and then, what are we going to do? Oh yeah, the Twitch button. So join screen. Needs a reference to its Twitch button. What the? Where's the actual button? Man, why is it all the way in here? So join screen needs a reference to this button right here. And if I look at this button, it is a title and an image. Can I put a canvas group on this? What? So cool. So cool. Actually, I'm not going to do that because what I don't want to do is... Hmm. What I ideally want to do is make it like pressed or something. So what we'll just do for now is we'll just hide it. So Twitch match controller, sorry, Twitch join controller on pressed. It calls um, shoopity boop, shoopity boop, shabbity boop. Let's see. On press, this button calls Twitch join controller dot show countdown. Here is the method. And so here we're going to go button, Twitch star button dot game object dot set active. We're just going to do this for now. And later on, we're going to actually give it a state where it's turned on and turned off so the user knows they pressed it. Yeah, Damage Vol, you should make a bot with minigames. Do it, do it, do it. Warner, what's up, man? How's your internet coming along? Any, any words from your ISP yet? Oh gosh, I did not mean to delete the join screen. All right, let's give this a shoddy shot shot. I'm gonna 
come in here. I'm going to invite you guys. Let's do it. 59 seconds. Type play in chat to join. Oh yeah, we have to fix the sizing of the zero joined. Zero joined text is shrinking. All right, we got three queued already. Five, six. Whoa, holy shit. This is awesome. Very cool, guys. Very cool. And please try to break it. Please try to type in weird stuff and try to enter three, four, five, six times. We're also going to need sounds for this menu. So, uh, SFX on Twitch countdown. Timer and join. We got six people, 30 seconds to go. Awesome. Thanks for trying to break it, guys. Looks like it's holding up. Looks like it's holding up. All good. All good in the hood. 18 seconds. 17. 15. 37. 92. If you guys are watching, you don't know what's going on. This is a game called Skyhook. And right now, you can type play to show up as a bot in the game. This is a game where you fight with grappling hooks. <laughs> All right. We got Finn, Damage Ball as Finn. Werner as Runa and Daniel as Runa. Should have everyone type the same character and color. Ah, that's a good idea, that's a good idea. Yeah, let's do that. We'll do that for this match, that's a great idea. X and F. Or wait, who said that? Toja, yeah, that's a great idea. Alright, let's do this. We're gonna do a Skyball match. Make sure our new team select menu is working. I'll put you guys on, you on red. Ooh, what I should do is... Um, Show profile name on cursor in team select and join screen. I feel like I should just show your profile name so you know whose tokens you're grabbing and stuff. Maybe I could replace CPU with like NAR for Narcos and like DMG for damage and stuff like that. Damage Vault's gonna kick ass. Let's do this. Tombs of Raw Skyball. This is a game mode where there's one ball, two goals, and two teams. Throw the ball into the goal with your grappling hook. Oh, Daniel takes me out immediately. Oh, and Daniel lands a goal real quick. Oh, looks like the thing didn't trigger. Oh, no reference exception. Let's see if we can trigger it ourselves. There we go. So see if you guys can vote. A random team store button. Yeah, it's a good idea, Toja. It's a very good idea. Oh, and the bot's dominating the Skyball match. Oh, but Damage Ball takes him out. I'll take that damage. Pass it back. Send it here, send it here. Come on. Ah, oh, you should have sent it to me. All right, we got to vote for cannons. Awesome. Oh, it still says Griffin. Sorry, guys. There is no Griffin to vote for. That is totally my fault. Oh, Damage Ball with the goal. So I think what I'm going to do is we need to scale the points. Oh, and Daniel's goal scores the goal on himself. Nice. Winners, me and damage. Let's do this. Treasure add damage wall 1000. All right, so this thing isn't quite working yet. It's not quite working. Hey, fat... Fat Daddy, Fat Daddy, Fat Daddy, welcome to the crew. You are watching Skyhook Game Development, a game where you fight with grappling hooks, and we're adding Twitch integration to this game. So there's a couple of things, a couple of things. First of all, uh, Racer HUD should hide when match ends. Racer HUD, let's see what this null reference exception was here. I think I have an idea. Yep, I'm an idiot. So this should be if HUD controller and recycle the HUD controller. Did I do 10,000? Oh, shit. Hold on, I could take those away. <laughs> Ankbot documentation. Oh, damage vault, so lucky right now. Better use those all up if you can. Because I'm about to drop those from you. Uh, currency. How do we, how do, we do it? There we go. Uh, remove. All right, treasure, remove. Um, it was who was it? Damage wall. 
10,000. Is that how much I typed? Holy shit. <laughs> oh man, buy a yacht. Buy a yacht right now. Let's try that again. Treasure add. Damage fall 1,000. There you go. There you go. Sky Pimp. <laughs> yes. Wait, if I'm the Sky Pimp, does that make you guys the Sky Hookers? That's awful. That seems awful. Alright, we'll save that. So, okay, some problems we're having right off the bat is if there's not enough people voting, there's not much happening. Uh, we have it right now, it's taking like 30 votes, which I can probably set myself. Let's see, uh, Racer HUD, HUD, Twitch Power Up HUD. So, a couple of things to start. First of all, the power ups are not showing the correct commands up here because I think I totally forgot to do that. These icons should like go over there. Uh, or wait, these icons should like go over here. Uh, yeah, so to start the text panel, so we need to actually set this command. Uh, set vote for string in racer HUD. Rames, is there no way to use the actual Twitch API through the IRC thing? Uh, I don't know. Because it has a viewer account, right. Well, yeah, you can if you enter your own authentication token. Uh, then you can do it. Uh, so you, you can do it based on that. But how would we scale it by viewers? Would it be like... No. Yeah. good question I guess for now yeah, what we can do because I, I don't want I don't want to do the authentication stuff on stream so what I'll do is for now is we'll increase the point value where does it do plus plus on vote for type trigger voted power up and should do boop should do boop oh no that's not what I meant to do on vote for type do this and then here I'm just going to do plus equals five. Let's just do ten so we can make this way faster. For let's just do yeah, let's do ten so it's be easier for doing. Yeah, the auth thing poses a security risk for streamers. Well, what we could do is like move it out of the code and like put it into um, put it into a separate file maybe, and they have to make sure they do it on their own time. I was just trying to look into if ch I'm batching choice chamber requires you to put in your authentication code at some point, right? Because they're doing quite a bit of stuff in there. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, let's do that. And then we're going to have to adjust this HUD title. So that's never being set. Yeah. So create icon. So do public void set title. String or a treasure type new types and what it's going to say is vote for local text file would be cool yeah something like that and I could just the game will read it in and then pull it in I was thinking about doing that myself as well yeah it probably makes the most sense I just I got I definitely got to pick up choice chamber um, soon and see how they're doing some of this stuff Vote for, yeah, vote for. Damn, that'd be easy to do. Yeah, no, totally. Putting it into a file and just reading it would be pretty easy. I'm guessing we'd have to just ask for their authentication token in the settings or something, right? Uh, title plus equals exclamation plus new type or sorry, treasure type to string. So we're gonna say vote for, and then all the treasure types we pass in. Rames, there is a trust issue to get the streamer to give you their oath token is a tall order, I guess. They don't know that you aren't leeching them behind the scenes. Hmm, yeah, interesting, that's a good That's a good point. Yeah, that's why I figure if they trust, uh, tr if they trust Choice Chamber, then maybe they'll trust me. 
I don't know. But yeah, I kind of like how right now it's like, because it's not a Twitch game, right? Like, Choice Chamber was actually funded by Twitch, and it's like a Twitch game. It's all about playing with Twitch. Whereas this is more of like an extra feature to the game, so I don't know, maybe it's nice to keep it really thin, uh, really low, like, thin weight? What's the term? Low bar, low barrier to entry, right? I'm, I'm bad at, like, sayings in English. Um, so string title, blah, blah, blah. And then finally we're going to do HUD title. That text equals title. Doubloon store. <laughs> what? Oh, damage roll. That would be awesome. That's something I could make. If you make the battleship game, maybe I could make a doubloon store where you guys could buy, like, power ups and shit. And, like, equips. Plus 10 for sword. Two, plus 10 for two handed Excalibur. Set title, vote for, blah, blah, blah. Now we can actually do this. So here's the create icon thing Alpha, treasure type. Oh, it's totally hard coded right now. That's good to know. What the fuck? Set <laughs> uh, race manager. Set title. Wait, where is this? Oh, it's right here. Okay, so uh, let's do treasure type. Um, uh, vote list equals new treasure type. And we'll do cannon barrage, mirror, and slow motion. Uh, and then we'll do set title, vote list, and we'll do void, set icons, same thing, an array of types. And for each, in new types. Whoa, not computer player compatibility result. For each treasure type, we'll create an icon for that treasure type. So nice, clean, lean methods here. So set icons for the vote list. <laughs> it's funny because that's an array, it's not a list. Damage Vault, I'll get in here with you. How much treasure do I have? I haven't, I haven't battled in a long time. I'm going all in. Let's go. 887. So set the titles, set the icons, set the racers. If race manager, set icons, sprites to array. The fuck is this? Oh, that's getting saved here. Hmm. All right. Just the icon sprites dot clear. I think this is. I'm not liking how this is being done right now, but we can worry about that a little bit later. Because creating a list of all of its types. Yeah. Kick what? You kicked me from the ship. Damage volume, you jerk. Are you kind of practicing stuff you might do for your game? That's awesome. And then grow title. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see if that works. Versus stage zero. Yeah, we still don't have the freaking test data. So yesterday I refactored the game manager a little bit. So that's why I don't have the test data. Okay. That didn't work. Start, blah, blah, blah. Create racer HUD. Spawn Twitch power up. Show. Grow 
crew title. The entire crew got wiped out. God damn it, damage ball. I lost all my good balloons. Um, do we have a null reference? No. All right, we need to do. Uh, hold on. Create test match. Right now this is empty. And that's all we can start from a scene. So let's just fix that. So load test players. Let's see what it's trying to actually do. This is just the same thing as this is nothing. So let's go find low test players. Dev console, create test match. No, I don't. You don't have to do that, Dev console. Uh, so here we're going to create a test match, and what that's trying to do is it's finding out if active players is zero. We're going to say active players dot add. Uh, oh shit, that's player controllers. Wait, what? If active players equals null, create test match. No, we don't want to do that. We want to go to game manager, current player info. Here we go. Match countdown. So, if game manager, Count, player count equals zero, then create test match. What we'll do is basically if there's no one playing in the game, we're going to create some fake data. Let's say game manager dot add players. What is it? Joined. On player, join game. Player info, new info. New player info. And we'll just say. I make a loop out of this. I is less than two. I plus plus. What's up, guys? Dan, you're fighting over a convoluted if statement. Oh, that's frustrating, man. Rames, you skimmed over the REST API on Twitch GitHub. It seems the streamer can log into their account and set up an application like Skyhook. Okay. And that gives them a secret key that you could then put in a text file. Oh, that would be good because then it's just a key specific to the game as opposed to a, ski, a key specific to their account. That's very smart. Just use the public info. Just make a get request to tmi.twitch.tv. Huh. You'll get a JSON with the viewer, simple as that. Interesting. That's cool, Narcos. I didn't know about that. Uh, new player info I. What, what is wrong here? New player info I. Character.anara. Team.none. Uh, no. And. Just put input device or input manager dot devices I and finally no. Now we should be able to start the game from the scene. Let's take a look, sees. Rames, forget all your rambling, that's the way to go. Sweet. So Narcos, you said we gotta do a uh, get request. Wait, where'd you go? Uh, just use a public info. Just get do a get request. How, do you know how to do a get request from uh, from Unitai? No! Whoa, what just happened? No reference again. Player input controller. Jump button was pressed. Let's do whoop shabba doop shabba da pop shabba do this. We'll just do zero. Just give them both control from my gamepad. I'm gonna mute the audio because those death sounds are super loud for me. Ah, oh, the WW class, cool. Uh, 
Alright, this is working. That is not quite working, but at least the votes are way bigger now. If is keyboard. Looks like the player's device isn't getting set. Array index out of range. Get device ID for that. Oh, let's, let's look at the device ID. <clears throat> it all us to find the device of our Well, the device ID now is in the player info, right? It's game manager dot get device for player ID. I think it's how do we know your player ID? Player ID dot PID. Okay, so it should be game manager dot get device PID. Oh, that just fuck. All right, we're gonna do zero. Sweet, Daniel, you got a how to send and receive data to and from a URL. Awesome, guys! Thanks for all the resources. Ah, Daniel could be bigger. Awesome, we'll do. Thanks, man. All right, got this working. Got control in both bots. Um, so now we can test why the HUD isn't working. And yeah, guys, I'll look into that URL thing in just a sec once we fix this weird HUD issue. So treasure, Twitch power up HUD, set title, vote list, vote list. Something wrong with my array? Free treasure type at new type, title plus equals, treasure type to string. Ah, oh, I'm such an idiot. Oh wait, no. Yeah. What the fuck? Why did I type title as a string? Look at this, guys. Instead of putting in the variable title, I typed the string title and set that as the text. WTF. Yeah, it's really helpful for basic data like channel name broadcast. Yeah, I was looking at, I think you had a link to what the data kind of looks like. So it's like chatter, chatter count, moderators, that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool, because like, yeah, so Toast Chamber does something where it's like, it gives you extra points to the moderators or something like that. All right, Cannon Barrage, Mirror, Slow Motion. The icons are all wrong. It goes to two string, dot, two upper. So why are icons wrong? Our icon is vote list. Freeze treasure type and new types. Create icon treasure type. Some type add sprites. What is this doing? Icons dot add dot follower value. Damage Vol, join your crew. I think I'm out of treasure, man. But I'll go in with my three. Uh, let's create an icon. It gets the icon. So we're not going to do that. This is stupid. We're going to do where the class go. I'm going to close all this other stuff. Set icons for each. Curious as to why it's all getting set as Griffin. Oh, because I'm doing that. Probably. We got rum, great idea. Uh, I used the middle mouse button rames to close all those icons and spam close it that way. 
Okay, the power up, the HUD should start in three seconds. There we go. Okay, and so now you guys should be able to vote. So let's see if that works. So I'll stand still here and everyone can start voting. I'll vote cannon. Oh, it's this cannon barrage. That's a mistake. Or is it cannons? Okay, so there we go. Cannon worked. Someone else vote cannon. Sweet. Mirror, nice. Yeah, the, the string is wrong because slow motion is not going to work. It's, the command is supposed to be slow. Sorry, Miss Kapuka. What's going on, Miss Kapuka? It's supposed to be slow. It's supposed to be the command. My bad. Yeah, hey, no worries, Reigns. We learn something new every day, man. Every day. Every day. All right, we got the cannon vote. And start again. So what's the, some of the problems we have? One is the do move is too fast. Let's get this down to five. And then on the votes, we're parsing them wrong. So it should be treasure type, some power up, so we'll do string, um, treasure, or power up name, and then we'll finally pass in the treasure type. And then we can use this here, user votes dot add, HUD controller on vote for type some power up user votes dot add okay we're gonna need something that matches treasure types to the actual commands hey I'm off to play what's going on what's going on this is a cool effect thanks 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 so we need a dictionary probably is that the best data structure for this you guys let me know if you think something is better that maps um, these commands to what power up they actually are. Because we need to actually print that out as well. Um, we could make a method also. We could say uh, string treasure command, and it takes a treasure type, some type. Vote type equals treasure type none. Uh, and then based on some type, and then we'll return vote type. Uh, wait, this is backwards. Motherfucker! A hash set may work as well, considering how we found out being 01. Oh, yeah, right, you guys, we discovered the hash set on uh, Daniel's stream yesterday, right? Let's look it up. So this is backwards. Not gonna do that. Hash set. Oh gosh. Hash set. How did I get so far? Hash set. Blah blah bloop. Blah blah blop. Hash set. Well, what is this? Using hash set in Unity, well, it's the same as using it in C Sharp. All right, there were some issues with what version it comes in, right? I have to play. Did you missed the cooldown sketch. No, no, no. The cooldown sketch is at the end. You got. You're plenty of. You came in plenty of time. Hash set is your best option. Sweet. So hash set, and it's just a type. Set is a list. Well, I think, yeah, so I think we'll, we'll just do a dictionary to make because what I want to do is I guess for a hash set, we'd have to make a class for the two different objects. So we're like, oh, I guess we probably should, but I 
Really cool by learning and researching by others. Yeah, for sure, man. So we probably should... Let's see... Because can a hatchet have two... Th like, Because I need a key value, right? I need... The key is going to be the treasure type, and the value is going to be the string command. Or vice versa. Fuck. Archer Robin Hood, what's going on? Thanks for hanging out today. Hashtag is usually used for checking if something exists and for encryption. Okay. If you need the key type to the value, then I think you need a dictionary. Yeah, what's confusing me is we need both. I'm trying to wonder I'm trying to wonder which one we should sort it by. Or which one we should which should be the key and what should be the value, right? So We're gonna sometimes need to know the string title and we're gonna sometimes need to know the Oh yeah, you know what? I I know what we're doing. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. So we got generic here, so we'll say dictionary, um, and it's going to consist of a treasure type. Oh no, wait, sorry. String, command, and treasure type. String and treasure type. And uh, we'll call this vote commands. new dictionary I'm off to play I'm glad I'm glad is it helping out the Sebastian League toots hope there's a good void setup command dictionary so we'll do vote commands it's probably something we want to make like you can read it from an XML later or something add uh, and the key will be uh, slow and the value will be slow motion. So we're gonna do the first three here. We got cannons. It's gonna be cannon barrage. And we have, what was the other one? Mirror. That's gonna be mirror. All right, so we have that. So we don't need this anymore. So what we can do is, if, Vote commands, I oh, need to actually initialize this. We'll set it up on awake. Yeah, Archer Robin Hood. If you want a dictionary with two inputs, outputs, sounds more like you want a list of a struct. That's true. Yeah. A struct that has one for the name and one for the type. Uh, Narcos, we could use the URL I passed on the chat recommendation is, is register an app in Twitch. It'll give you your client ID and then the REST API. You'll just need to get some get requests of REST API. Whoa, what about, what would URL? Yeah, Archer Robert has got it for sure. But, um, if you want a list of a struct, but then that's gonna be, it's gonna ON to search for it, right? Because what we can do here yeah, I'm, we might not need it both ways. I think I might have mistaken when I said we needed both to look at it from the value and the key. I think we just need the key because what we can do here is we find out the key exists and then we'll pass the key in to the HUD and the HUD will just print the key. Yeah, so I think we're going to be fine. Let's see. Vote commands. Vote commands dot contains key. Uh, some vote. or a set of a struct if you don't need it indexed. XNF of a class. Contains key, some vote. What was I doing? I lost my track of thought. Oh yeah, so if it contains key, then vote type equals vote commands, some vote dot value, or, oh, time to do dot value. That is the value. Uh, so we're going to pass that in, we're going to get the vote type, and that's going to be the value, which is fine, because now we have the vote here, all good, and we could pass the vote in here, 
user votes that add some power up, HUD controller vote for type some power up type. Um, slow cannons mirror. Yes, and then what we can do here, where is it? So right now we're hard coding this list. Is that in awake? Yes, okay. Structs are nice uh, to new because of no garbage costs. Oh, I didn't know that. If you feel regular, al regular allocated objects, you're better off using a class. Um, so we need a list of power ups. Hmm. Oh, did I mean to do it the opposite way? Yeah, crap, maybe we do need something that references both directions. Vote commands that add slow message. Let's see. <clears throat> I'm trying to think if there's a better way we could do this overall, right? So we're setting up the dictionary, um, and that's how we're checking if the vote is accurate, but we're also trying to add the string up here at the top. And whenever we do that, we're gonna wanna get three random commands. Ah, so what we can do is uh, we can do a yeah we should we should just do a list I think you guys are absolutely right a list of a specific class that finds a thing how do you but how, what's the best way to search between a, inside of a list of structs or a list of a class Uh, so what we can do here is we can create. Oh, you know what we can do? We can just create a list. Hold on. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, check it one by one. Yeah, that's what I was worried. I mean, I guess it's not that bad here, right? It really doesn't matter because, yeah. I mean, we at most are going to have, like, how many power-ups are there? There are... Oh, sorry, I forgot to zoom in, guys. There are 7 minus 18, so, like, 11... Uh, not even 11. 10 power-ups? Yeah, I guess that's not bad at all, right, guys? So, all right, let's do this the proper way. Let's do it the object-oriented way, since we're all pro-object-oriented hanging out here. So, we'll just do a class. Uh, we'll call this uh, vote command. And public string... Um, name and public treasure type type can I use type or should I just use treasure type and we'll call this treasure vote command I use treasure and power up a lot interchangeably if there's less than 10,000 things in the list you'll hardly notice anything at all good to know yeah, especially if we're only doing this like once every now and again, so. Cool, yeah, thanks guys. Well, let's go, let's not, we won't optimize too early, right? We'll do it. So here we can do vote commands dot add. Oh, we need to add a constructor. Uh, public vote commands. String, name, and treasure type, type, name. And I think there's a, if you guys know the shortcut, please let me know. I believe there's a shortcut in um, ReSharper to just create a constructor for you. I would love to know how to do that. Uh, we, I don't know what a source typed enum means. But we don't want to actually get the name of the enum, we want to give it our own names. Uh, so it's going to be independent of what the actual enum named is, if that's what you mean. So treasure vote command, we'll do this and this and this. And if vote commands, so we'll say 
new vote command. Use a select the class and look at the alt enter menu it might be enter. Oh it might be there. Alt enter. Alt enter. Oh god. You just made it a fucking file. Whatever. Goodbye class, I'll see you next time. Uh, each enum gets its own name and there could be several, well there's, the two cases are, uh, there could be different cases for different, ultimately probably have to read this in for something, there could be different cases for localization if the game ever gets that far. Um, I should not have alt entered guys, alt enter was a mistake. I don't know why it did that for the class, it's because I did it twice. Maybe. All the answers the menu for the things Sharper can do. Look at that list and see if that's one of the options. Yeah, it, I don't know why it immediately went to um, creating a class. Yeah, there's a the constructor thing right there. So yeah, I'm not sure. Let's see if we could do it again. Alt-Enter, generate code, constructor. Oops. Alt enter. Alt enter. What the fuck? I'm giving up, guys. I'm giving up. Five milliseconds would be an amazing performance difference. Uh, enum treasure type string. Then you can set every enum a string in the enum file. Huh. Oh. Cool. Let's see. Shoop a doop, shab a bop. So enum treasure type string. That's pretty cool. So we can just do this. Equals shield. Like that. Enum string. Equals one. Bloop de bloop. Where's the answer? Oh wait, this... It used to work, yeah, hmm. I inherit enum from string. Only numbers. Lame. Lame. That's... You need const values? Let's try menu strings dot CPU. No, I don't think so. Anyways, we're going back to our list. No, we're not trying to cast the enums to a string uh, because the enums are named differently from what the strings we need them to be, right? So the slow motion enum is called slow but we need its command to, like, it's called slow motion, but we need its command to be slow. Because uh, the problem is we don't, I don't want the name of the commands in Twitch to be tied to the actual enums, because the enums could be anything. They're usually stuff that's more code oriented than actually, like just cannons isn't a very good enum, etc. So in some cases it makes sense, but in some cases I'd rather not have it be exactly the same as the enum. So you'd have a static function with enum as a parameter and let it parse through a switch and return the correct string. That's the fastest way. All right. Set up command. So let's see if, let's just think about that's gonna work for all of our cases. So we have, uh, what we're trying to do is create the thing based on enums, add the HUDs, yeah. I think that's going to work. Set title, vote list. Oh yeah, let's undo all the stuff we did in here. <clears throat> uh, where is the votes happen? Treasure vote command, I don't need that anymore. If vote commands, I could contains key. 
Yeah, we just want a magic command to our spawn. So that would be the most kind of uh, like the easiest way to just get to it, right? So that's, that's where I started, if you guys remember. And then we went down the crazy path of trying to make a better data structure for it. And then back to having a method that just converts from one to the other. Uh, string treasure to command. And we could do uh, treasure type, some type. Yeah, we want to match it back and forth. So what we can just do is just have two methods that go both ways. I think we're complicating it and ended up, we're taking way longer on this problem than we need to. Uh, so we'll just do switch, some type, case, uh, mirror, Strings are already matched in enums. You should not even get used for casting it to a string or vice versa. The entire post is that your magic numbers will be accessed via human readable string value. Mirror. What are we doing? Cannons. And. Uh, what was the other one we were going to add? Mirror cans all slow motion. Right, right, right. Yeah, Mr. Booker, totally. <clears throat> Foot commands contains key. Some type. Yeah. And we're just going to return. I don't even need the break. We just return mirror cannon. I wonder if it should be singular or plural, or maybe that shouldn't matter. Slow. Edm.toString usually just it prints out this value. So like cannon barrage that two string would print out cannon barrage. At least from my experience in um, in C sharp, uh, treasure to command, and then here we can do boot to boop, boot to boop, shiver to boop, set title, treasure types, new types. So we can do treasure. Where did I put that method? Match controller. Or sorry, Twitch match controller. M instance dot treasure to command. New types to upper. Oops, not new types. New types dot. We want to just send in treasure type. And we don't need the exclamation anymore because that's part of the command. We just need a space. Uh, so blah blah blah, set title, we're going through that. Now we need to do a better way to check the commands. I think I could still do this. We can still do a dictionary string and treasure type and call this all commands. Now that we have that method, we can just set that up. So do we delete all those methods? Yeah. Void, create commands. Uh, and then we're going to do all commands dot add and we can do treasure type treasure to command mirror and then mirror and the reason I'm not enumerating over every single power up is because we don't want to add all of them into this feature right now we probably don't want to do that in the future either so we're just going to do these cannon and uh, what was the other one mirror cannon and slow motion So a little bit more of a naive approach, but this should, it's called vote commands, it's called all, yeah, we'll call this vote commands. 
boat commands. If it contains a key, then we return the value of that key, which is awesome. And then we can just get that in reverse over here, which is also awesome. This switch is broken because it doesn't have a default case. And let's see what happens. There we go, vote for cannon, mirror, or slow. It's a thing. And I got it from the array, and oh, it reset for some reason. <clears throat> let's see if we can all vote. So I'm gonna vote cannon. Slow, nice. Uh, most people, you almost wanna try that just for science, totally. But if you need a string in a set, you could use a struct or a class, or a concept of strings, yeah. We could just make a class for the different commands later. Look at me controlling two bots at once, or two players. Hey look, that's player one and player O. Oh. That's Poe. Ooh, that nice world space, or screen space HUD. Hmm, the mirror vote didn't work. Oh, because you already voted, Miss Kapuka. I wonder how that should work. Because if you only have three... Oh, that's actually... This is a huge problem. Huge problem, right? Oh, that's where we're going to do the math with the users? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you only have three users, then you can only get three votes. And then how the hell does it work? What if each user votes for a different thing? Oh, no, yeah, totally. It's having to break it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What do we do with three users? Ooh, can I get myself to ride? Oh, no. Can I get my other self inside the boat? No, I can't. There we go, I can do this. Yeah. See, I'm curious, how should we scale the votes, right? So if you have one user, hey, it's me riding with me. Oh wait, no, he's gonna fall off if I move too much. Rames for a cannon vote, thank you. Ms. Kapuka, you say, uh, if they're all the same or if they are matched votes, choose a random one. I'm not sure what you mean. If they're all the same? Like if they tie, if all the power-ups tie? Archer Robinhood, what are we using for the bot reading the chat? We are using Twitch IRC in Unity, which is on GitHub. Shop it up. So yeah, I guess what we need to have is a timer, right? Otherwise this will just never end until there's enough votes, in which case it sucks. So yeah, I guess that's what we're, we're missing right now. Is there should be, and we gotta hide it when the thing ends, when the match ends. What? Just fucking, I don't know. Uh, Twitch power up HUD, void start, set title, grow title. Is a hide? Yeah. So void update if game controller match ended hide and we'll make a bool bool is showing here is showing is true if is showing don't show and here is showing is false and if not showing, then don't show. What's up, guys? This is Buka. If you have a slow and cannon both at five votes, you could choose a random one between the cannon and slow and the timer ends. Yeah, so I actually realized we didn't even have a timer yet. Uh, Archer Robinhood, that leaked. I was already wondering where you got the code. Leaked? What leaked? Ah, yeah, Rames. You're right. Yeah, that was the idea. The deal is they would move by themselves. Yep, 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 yep. If you end the timer with three votes, yeah, so it, it, it shouldn't be timer, it should just be they're all moving, and yeah, if they all end up at the same thing. Okay, I totally forgot about that aspect of it. Um, 
so if um, what was I gonna say if 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 oh yeah uh, so racers should move automatically get boosted by votes right because that makes it a lot more a lot more interesting because then they're moving constantly as opposed to just moving every now and again yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I totally forgot about that from yesterday cool dude what's up you can take advantage of the order of chat and when there's a draw just choose whenever winning was last voted ah interesting and then deal with draws on end Archer already made the exact same code cool someone asked for help so I send in my code would it be coincidence if that it looks so alike uh, I don't know I imagine they would probably be very similar things to do but you're saying this grands guy stole your code yeah there's only so many ways you could parse IRC for sure Uh, shop to bop, shoop to beep. We are looking for treasure to command some type. What are we doing? Oh yeah, moving everything automatically. So that should happen. Could just make it happen as a core routine on the power up HUD. when it starts, or when it's set up, sorry. So start, race manager, set racers, set title, set icons. So we can do void, start, race, and I enumerator, uh, race, tick, What updates it? Icons that add some type do followers. On vote. Icon desired. There we go. On move. Icons. Okay, so we actually have a list of them already. Cool. So for each and icons, which is a dictionary of dot followers? Why? Just gonna make a list of, oh God, motherfucking. I could probably wanna do this here in the dot race manager. You can use locks in Unity? Mm -hmm. uh, Alright, so we are... Oh, by the way, everyone, hanging down in chat. If you're wondering what we're working on, we are working on Skyhook, a game where you fight with grappling hooks. And we are adding some Twitch integration so you guys can vote on power-ups during the match. So let's do this. Let's get to this. So we're going to do updates, set racers, start. So we're going to make public pool is auto race. And we're going to say if is auto race because we have a list of dot followers. Yep. So then we're going to do this here. Start coroutine race tick. Race tick is going to be recursive. So for all the dot followers in dot followers for var follower in dot followers follower dot move and this will set to have an int move value equals one that way when you vote for it it'll push it even further so here we'll say vote move and we'll say five there we go and so the dot race manager
just trying to catch up in chat. There's like a lot going on. It's awesome. Uh, then we're going to do yield, return, new, wait four seconds, one. So every second we'll do another race tick. Uh, then we're going to start coroutine race tick again. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It'll keep moving for each follower. Blah, blah, blah. And yeah, that should go. We just got to set this as an auto. Auto, auto race. Race manager. Get spawned over here. Race manager. Wait, where does it come from? Twitch Power Hub Race Manager. Oh, okay, we just could check that in the prefab. So, Power Up HUD. We're going to set the Race Manager here as Auto Race. We'll save that, delete, and we'll start another match. Oh, camera's freaking out. All right, now they're all moving at the same time, which is both crappy and not crappy. Try to make them move slower because it's pretty fast right now and there's not enough time for users to vote. So, hmm. Oh, or it could choose a random one each, each second to move, right? That would be a lot more fun. Um, so what we can do is dot follower race manager. So on every tick, it picks a random thing to move. So int random follower equals dot followers. Oops, is random dot range zero and dot followers dot length. And then we'll do dot follower i or oops dot follower random follower on move. So every second, a random one will move. Is that more unfair or less unfair, I wonder? It's way less of a vote. Yeah, more random picking. You're right, Dan. You're right. Hmm. How should we do it then? So the problem is they're both just they're all just moving at one time, which seems kind of boring. But Dan's right. It takes away the voting aspect if it's just random. Iterative design, ladies and gentlemen. Iterative design. Could make this longer tick. We can, of course, offset them by a little bit. Then it's always the first one to do 0 0.3, because I hate that they're all moving at the same time. Yeah, so I had like a slight delay It's a lot less interesting now. I mean, I had a slight delay between them, so yeah, that was good. Like a four second, a 0.4 second delay. Let's go back to one seconds between. Let's do two seconds maybe. Dan, yeah, I like it too. It looks like they're kind of just like trotting forward. Yeah, we're both spawn on top of each other. All right, there we go. They're racing. Now you guys can try to vote for which one you want. It actually makes it way easier if both bots, I mean, if both debug characters spawn on top of each other. Because I don't have to worry about controlling one of them. And they can't even kill each other. It's awesome. Or they probably melee each other, actually. Daniel's suggestion, add a little Y offset to each one of them so they're not on top of each other. Yep, yeah, good call, good call. All right, slow jumps forward, mirror jumps forward. Oh, this is looking so much, it's feeling so much better, guys. It's feeling so much better. That's for sure. We're gonna add some Y offset to it next. Let's make sure it triggers. We don't have a, we don't, we're not dealing with uh uh, the ties yet, but one of them is always going to get there first because of the offset, so... Let's 
Archer Robin Hood trying to break it. Cool, cool, cool. I think it's going to be Mirror. Yep, Mirror is timed first. Oh, why didn't it trigger? Oh, crap. Because... I'm only triggering it before when we were taking votes. We're not doing it there. Um... What we could do is check, could check every frame, but that's bad. We could just have these report to someone. Yeah. So dot follower, let's see, dot race manager, dot, dot race manager is the one that's moving them. Yeah. So race tick, blah, blah, blah. Uh, void on racer. On uh, race completed, and it's going to send in some dot follower or how are we going to know who won? On race completed, Twitch power up. HUD. Could send a delegate to call back at the Twitch power up HUD. We could totally cheat. And just say Twitch power up HUD dot race completed. Public void race completed. Oh, yeah, we do have a dictionary of dot followers, right? Oh shit, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. It's on race completed, so we don't have to do all of that. We'll do if um, follower dot fucking what they fucking if follower dot what is the value or something? I forget what it's moving. Desired dot. Greater than or equal to dot amount on race completed. And then how do you break a coroutine? I think it's yield break. That should end the coroutine, right guys? On race complete, we don't have to do all that. We'll just do this. We'll call the HUD and we'll call that this follower has completed. Rames it well. Okay, cool. Thanks, man. Daniel, what'd you miss? We're just doing some race city race race. Oh, we were going to offset the racers, right? Uh, we can do that when we make them. Nope, that's where it makes the dots. That's where it sets the racers. How do you move stuff in the UI? You use the transform set parent. I oh, don't even. All right, we can just do it this way. Uh, boop -ba doo Create set icons. Create icon. Icon sprites. What? Oh, create icon. What? I have no idea what that thing is doing. Guess the treasure info. What's actually setting the goddamn icons on this dot follower? It's the dot race manager? Set racers, I see. What we can do is image is image, 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 uh, image dot transform dot y minus whoa set world y okay dot y oh yeah that's cool is that a do tween thing 
that's awesome. Image that transform dot position dot y minus 0 0.2 times or 0 0.2 times i. Pure evil. That should work though. <clears throat> On winner, we're just gonna do race completed. Ooh, we got a battle. Oh, I missed out. And race manager dot followers uh, icon if icon dot wait what we need to know is when one of those things ends and they have no reference to what they're actually who they are they just know they're in they don't even know their index So what we can do is, why is this throwing, oh, dot M instance. Oh, is that not even a thing? Fucking hell. We can do it a very easy, very evil way. Treasure type with dot followers. We can do ba -ba watch race. We're just going to do this each blah. I don't understand the point of this icons dictionary. It adds to it and then on vote for type, I say. Var icon icon dot value dot uh, dot it's greater than or equal to race manager dot dot count what is all the race manager right dot race manager dot amount then we want to trigger Trigger voted power up on icon dot key, and then we want to hide. Anthony K, how am I doing? Doing good, doing good. We're so close to actually finally finishing up all the Twitch integration stuff, at least the basic Twitch integration stuff that we want to have for the game. How are you doing, Anthony? How's everything going? All right, there goes the race. Oh gosh, I just created a million. Look at this. I was pressing the wrong button. I didn't even call this method. This really hacky method. We're just iterating over the dictionary every frame. Not good, not good. All right, let's try this again and then you guys can actually vote. So it starts in three seconds. All right, there they go. You can start voting for cannon, mirror, or slow. All right, slow got a big vote. Oh, cannon gets a push. 
mirror. Mirror gets another push, and then the game explodes. What happened? <laughs> Holy, did you guys see that? Holy shit. Holy shit. Uh, so as soon as something triggered... Some mirror, yeah, I know, right? Some mirror, and first of all, it took a while to even do a thing. If it's really good in the dot amount, it should trigger voted power up, which right now just gets the first player and then equips them with it. Clear votes, twitch power up that hide, redo HUD. Huh. Hood controller dot hide. What the fuck happened? Mirror of the apocalypse, you're absolutely. Alright, let's debug something with our trigger function. It's true every frame, yeah, I guess that's what happened. So it just mirrored a th it triggered a thousand mirrors. So I did it. I changed that now. So let's see. Okay. Think that's good. XNF. Wait, who's talking about online multiplayer? Did I miss a conversation? It's Victorian, what's going on? Long time no see, buddy. Oh, slow motion went like way past the thing. Why is that? My stupid hacky method is checking every frame if it's greater than or equal to the dot amount. The desired dot, and then it triggers it. And there's no coroutines happening here. Except the redo coroutine. It should yield break, or is that only the race? Yeah, the race should break. Oh, you know what? We have to clamp this. Um, desired dot equals mathf dot clamp or he doesn't even know the max value. So public int max value and we'll do desired dot equals mathf dot clamp zero and max value and then in the manager when we make them dot race manager start those are image the game object those are the dots race tick set racers dot followers dot i dot max value equals count dot count what the fuck is it called dot amount seriously dot amount there we go that y thing isn't working is it 
image.transform XNF just saying yesterday you sound like you were in the mood for implementing it. Yeah, you know, just trying to get it done. We're actually going to work on some art today as well, so I'm trying to get to that quickly. So today's Pixel Dailies theme is Crab. And if you guys know anything about the characters in Skyhook, you know what that means. It means we could get some art done that we need to get done anyway. And we can do today's Pixel Dailies. Dot position and fix pause dot y minus equals that and position equals fix pause. Now you're not supposed to use transform for UI elements, right? Does it not work? Rames, I have zero experience with networking. Art your robot, Robin Hood, you're making your own MMO with Unity, cool. You created yourself with TCP, that's awesome, man. I mean, there are some major challenges, right? There's, A, there's actual you know, multiplayer integration, then there's actually having a community. I mean, people complain there's only 500 players in Duck Game. When that's quite a few players. I forgot what we just implemented. Oh yeah, clamping the values. All right, let's try this again. I'm gonna in decrease the start. All right, let's do this all the way from main menu. We're gonna run through the whole thing. I'm gonna turn on the audio. I'm gonna turn down my music. Put up some music, we'll put up some sound. If you guys can hear that okay on stream. Let me know if it's too loud. Alright, so I'm gonna invite you guys to join the match. 60 seconds, type play in chat to join. And if you're super advanced, remember you could actually type in the character's name as well. And what's cool is if we actually do connect this, connect this to the uh, the oath token or the authentication token, we can actually push to the chat, right? The chat can, like, the game can push to the Twitch chat, say things like, you know, you know, type exclamation play to join, and then tell you the names of the characters and stuff like that as well. Cool Archer, what kind of MMO is it? Is it like turn-based or like kind of WoW-based, or is it super action-based, FPS, something else? We got five in the queue, five in the queue. Archer, play Lime. There should be a character who's just a giant Lime. Play Jade, nice. Damage ball characters, ooh, that's a good command. Yeah, 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 I like it, I like it. We'll add that after this. All right, we got Rames as Anara, Narcos as Runa, and Miss Kapuka as Blue Jade. I'm gonna jump in as Finn the Land Shark. Oh no, it's not showing my name above my head. Okay, we're about that a little bit later. Start. Begin. Let's write some of those notes down. Uh, so exclamation characters. Not showing player name above head in sandbox. All right, let's go. Prepare to suck it, Mr. Kapuka. All right, so it shows your name in the match. It doesn't, doesn't show it in the sandbox. Oh, Mr. Kapuka takes him out. All right, guys, you can vote now. I should probably turn off treasure chest when this happens, but... Vote for cannon, mirror, or slow in the chat. Oh, and cannon. Oh, cannon gets two big boosts. Cannon gets three big boosts. Cannon's heading to the top. Cannon way in the lead. Mirror and slow motion don't even stand a chance. 
Oh, Narcos gets a griffin, hops off, and I'll lightning him in the face. Oh, I missed him. Okay, Cannon did not implement. He did not do a shit. Oh, I think I know what it is. I think I know what it is. This... Classified to a minute max and returns the value. Yes. Uh huh. Set racers. Um, no, that's not it. The Griffin showed up. Oh yeah, that was actually a power up. We should like turn off global power ups when this is going on. Narcos, your points. Oh, sorry, man. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We're testing. I'll give you some makeup points. You got 25 points to make up for it. Um, oh, let's add that command. Characters, great idea, damage wall. Um, characters, the Skyhook characters are uh, Anara, Finn, Runa, and Jade. How, I think I already have a how to play, right? Uptime, blog, how to join, yeah. Cool. Narcos, enjoy those 25 doubloons. Skyhookers all around. Skyhookers all around. Um, what are we doing? It didn't trigger. Because fuck. But it did hide, though. Right? Like, it did disappear. So maybe it didn't get... Alright, so we need to stop with this hacky method. Um, and let's go into the game controller. So we can do... Here. Public void trigger global power up. Some type... Alright, we're going to call this at 4 and then we're going to move on to some pixel art today. Treasure type dot none could getting passed in. Let's see. Trigger voted power up. It's a key. I don't know how none would even get set, but we can have yeah, let's print these out. Print triggered uh, if icon the value desired dot is greater than or equal to race manager. Then return icon dot value, or sorry, icon dot key. Oh, and then break. I don't know if that's going to make a difference. Probably not. Let's try again. Look, we didn't. Look, doesn't look like we had any errors. Archer Robin had a Huawei system, very cool. It's gonna be a sci-fi third-person shooter MMO with PvP and PvP. It's awesome, man. Tall order. So of course it works when we test it out. And I bet it's not gonna work when we actually do it all the way in stream. Oh, it might have been the mirror doesn't actually work. Hold on, let's see. Yeah, slow motion worked. Mirror doesn't do anything. Well, I guess we look the same, so I don't even know. Let's try this. Quit. Stay out of my way. Good workout.
should start now. There we go. Let's go to the dot racer. That's the sudden death, that's the mirror. We'll make your value, where are you? Put you ahead. Oh gosh, put you at 28. Huh, it does work. Fuck. The player might have been dead too, which is part of the hack that we're doing. Yeah, it could have very well been the player died in that second, because we're not using a global method to apply the power-ups. Oh god damn it, the bots all died. Yeah, it could very well be that. So what we're doing is once it's actually triggered, we're just getting the first player and applying this power up to him. And this method, if they're spawning or if they're dead or whatever, then it'll return. If they're dodging, it returns too. Shit. So yeah, that was just bad. So what we should be doing is game controller, trigger global power up, some type. And then this should do it, so switch, some type. Case, oh man, you guys all died. Oh, Narcos and Miskapuka made it out alive. Case Cannon Barrage, activate sudden death. So activate sudden death. Null. Turn, oops, break, case, um, what was the other one? Slow motion, trigger, slow motion. These are all methods that the game controller already has. And then case, why are you guys all over here? Why are you all bunching together? Uh, case, um, mirror. That's an interesting one because we need to turn everybody into someone. So we need to get a random player, which I think we have a method for in the game manager. Player names, do, do, player info, no. So we can just say player controller, random player equals, well, it needs to be Someone who's alive. So we can do uh, player controller, get random active player. The treasure type enum used to be used for something else. It's um, I, it's, I guess I constantly jump between calling the power-ups and the treasures the same, some, the same thing. I guess technically it's power-up type, right? Let's close all but this. I think it's technically, oh wait, no, I can't. I don't know if I want to change that. I might screw something up. Uh, if random player, uh, trigger transformation. And random player dot ID and random player. We'll do that. I'm gonna stop putting the mirror in there because it's fucking annoying. Uh, return null for each uh, active players. What's going on, guys? How are you guys doing in chat? How's everybody doing today? I haven't seen any updates on anyone's games. How come? How come no one's talking about their games right now? If players dot is active, it 
we'll just get the first one if we do it that way. We could do list player controller possible stupid NDAs. What? What? You can't talk because of an NDA? NDAs are the worst. I just show you guys everything I'm doing, even if it's bad code. Add players, and then finally, uh, if possible, count equals zero, return null, else return uh, possibles at random dot range between zero and possibles dot count. Actually, don't we have like a possibles get random? Yeah, I think I have that method already, which is sweet. Let's take a look at this method. It gets the list and it'll return defaults or it will return a random range within that list, a random element from the list. So if random player trigger transformation, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and what's cool is what I want to add, what I really wanted to do was this. Griffon egg. And we can do void give all players power up treasure type some type where Warner you're doing some fixes to your fatty enemy AI let's see oh your AI okay okay nothing we could see probably Brave they want to control marketing we're pushing internally for live streams in the future sweet yeah I'd love to I'd love to check in on that or yeah get in on that get in on that check in on that so here we're going to pass in Griffin Egg, uh, and what this is going to do is it's going to just iterate over all the players for our player and active players, and we're just going to do player dot try equip try player dot powers dot try equip some power up. This means that if if you get the Griffin mount thing, then everybody will just automatically get a Griffin mount out of the blue, which will be Hilarious. Uh, give all player power up. Okay, that should be the thing. Now, what I want to do is go in here. I want to do uh, bool is forced equals false. Because in that case, if they're spawning and skipping, I'll skip this. Uh, and here we'll say if. Hmm. I might break stuff. Problem is we can't give them a power up if they're in the middle of dodging or something. So we might have to do something where it queues them up for a power up later. Let's see, we could do Yeah, that's tough, that's tough. So to do this won't work if the player is dodging. I don't know what will happen if a player is dodging and then they get put onto a griffin. Holy jeepers. Yeah, well, let's find out the hard way. So, give all players power up, try equip, uh, null, false, and it is forced. So now they can pick it up. So the reason the logic is in there for them to dodge through power up so they can't pick up power up while they're dodging but that should probably be in the power-ups logic and not in the player's logic. So now we're going to go to our uh, treasure match manager. Treasure match manager? Oh, whoops. I mean Twitch. <laughs> Been using treasure words, treasure so much. Twitch match controller. We're going to change our list of treasures in the beginning uh, create commands, vote commands. Let's do Griffin. So we got a little bit of an overhead here for doing this. But once it's all set up, it should probably be fine. Griffin egg, exclamation, Griffon. 
Now it goes, you got grappled in the face by the crew, and now you're dead. Oh, man, RIP, RIP. And then where do we actually create... Let's so recreate the commands. And where do we actually make the HUD? Twitch HUD. There we go. So we'll switch slow motion for Griffin, and we'll see if that works. So one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. There we go. All right, let's put the egg in front. All right, I just saw it here somewhere. There it is. Egg is this one. Set its value to 28, like last time. And it should trigger. Motherfucker. Null reference. Summon power up trans. Oh, motherfuck. Uh, vector 2. Spawn position equals transform dot position if power up trans. So what happens is the player spawns wherever the the egg was because the the egg is floating above the ground, and now there is no egg, so the player can't spawn to it. Uh, power up trans if power up trans spawn position equals power up trans dot position. else spawn position dot y plus equals gameplay dot tile diameter times two. Basically, if we have a power up, we'll spawn it a little bit higher. Otherwise, we'll do that. So we'll say void get uh, mount spawn position. Oh, not void. Uh, transform sum power up. We'll make this a method because we're going to need it for other mounts. It's going to return a vector to transform. Ah, 406. Time just flies when you're trying to finish a thing. Get spawn. Get mount spawn position. And we passed in. What did we pass in? Power up trans. Yeah. Because we're going to do the same thing with the dragon. I lost it. Too much code. I can't see in all this code. It's too zoomed in. Is there a reason I put a space between the method name and the parameter list? Hold on. Do you mean... Uh, find references. Do you mean here? Not going to do the same thing. This should go there. Yeah, there's only two mounts right now. Uh, I usually just let it. I might be doing it. Yeah, I think I just do it inherently. I don't know why. And then we're going to return spawn position. I think ultimately I just let Visual Studio do whatever it decides to reset it to. Better for readability. Okay, so it's better to keep no space between the method name and the thingy. Cool, out your MMO stuff is working. Server client code, make prediction system. Yeah, prediction system is the hardest part about making an MMO or making an online game in general. I'll delete that space so Ms. Kapuka doesn't yell at me. Do I have a prediction system? Nope, I, I don't. I don't have an online system. I got nothing to predict. Icon, icon. Zero, one, 
All right, so everyone spawned with griffins. They spawned a little bit too high. We know that's working. It's going to make it one tile. I'm going to use the bathroom, and then we are going to test this thing all the way through. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to do that. So let's. I'm going to start. I'm going to start the game so there's some music playing, and then I'm going to use the bathroom and come right back. Alright guys, alright. How are you guys doing? Hope you guys are ready. Get your keys ready, get your fingers ready, get your fingers on your keys because we're going to do another test all the way through from beginning to end of some Twitch integration in Skyhook. I'll turn my webcam back on. Alright, let me start over. Oops, I think I turned it off again. And I turn it on again, and I turn it off again, and I turn it on again. There we go. All right, so we're going to do a full test on the latest Skyhook Twitch integration from beginning to end. So I'm going to start it up. Hope you guys are there. Let's get let's get going. Let's get going. Here we go. I am going to hit the invite Twitch chat button. 60 seconds. Type type exclamation play in chat to join to queue up to be one of the bots. We got one. We got one in. Let's go. XNF. Thanks for joining. Awesome. 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 Cool, Narcos, play Finn. Oh no, my uh, webcam. There we go, we got three reams, nice. I'm gonna turn the music up. There we go, Archer in as Jade, awesome. 27 seconds to go, guys. Fifteen seconds. Ten seconds. All right, we got Narcos, XNF, and Archer Robin Hood in the house. I'll pick Runa. I'm gonna switch to Red Runa. All right, and we're gonna start the battle. So remember, as soon as the battle starts, you guys can start voting on the power-ups you want to see. Reams needing 40 seconds is enough. Cool, good to know, good to know. Here we go, battle started. XNF, Narcos takes him out. Alright guys, you can start voting for your favorite power-ups. Alright, we gotta turn off the global power-ups next time. Here we go, here we go. Oh, sudden death. Canabrage in the lead. Ooh, I'm actually leading this match here. Oh, XNF knocks 
Exxon grabs the ship, shoots the cannonball. Cannon still in the lead. Oh, and I get blown to smithereens. Whoa, Arch Robin Hood claws me in the face. Nope, we couldn't really test it. I'm gonna restart that. I totally forgot to not end the match. Let's go again from the beginning, from the top, guys. Nobody won, so nobody lost any points. It's me, Archer, Narcos, and XNF. Vote for your favorite power-up. We got cannons, we got Griffin, and we got slow motion. Reams, I wonder, is it ignoring your vote because of the previous vote? I'm not sure. That would be bad. Narcos, there's no mirror this time. It's cannon, griffin, or slow. Oh, it's not taking any votes at all. Is it? Oh, it is, okay. Accident voted cannon. Alright, we might increase the speed of this race, decrease the amount of dots in the race. We have to look into we're gonna look into scaling it and stuff later on. Right now cannon should have triggered, but it's gonna wait till the next frame to trigger. There we go. At least it triggered. Reams, you feel totally ignored. Are you talking to me? What did I miss, man? What did I miss? We are going to adjust the race manager. Oh, ignoring your votes. Ah, oh, dude, you got me worried. I felt bad. Uh, set, where's the tick and the tick, tick, tick? Tickety talks dot race manager. The ticks every four seconds. We'll just do every one second. And we're going to set the global thing smaller. So we have to do next, I'll probably do this maybe next time on stream. Or I might do it tonight. We'll see how much time there is, but we'll, um, you know, start reading in the chat room. I gotta put that into to-do list. Read in how many people are in the room to adjust the values here. Let's put that on our giant to-do list, which keeps getting longer every day. Um, adjust dot uh, race length based on Twitch room size. All right, all right, all right. Reams, you're just kidding around. All good, all good. Um, yeah, so let's see. It did clear. Let's make sure it cleared the thing first. It triggers. It should clear votes, which is this thing here, just so that you guys can vote again. I mean, part of me almost wishes that you could vote a thousand times, but I don't know. Like, right? Because Twitch does keep you from... Uh, spamming the chat. What do you guys think? Like, should we allow users to vote more than once in the same race? All right. In the meantime, ooh, nice art. We're gonna open up some pixel edit. We're going to change up the name of the stream here.
we're gonna call it animating the crab captain we're gonna open up the character animations folder if you guys haven't seen him before this is Grimlock the one and only crab tin of Skyhook this is going to be the first unlockable whoa what was that oh that's fine this is going to be the first unlockable character in the game there he is bouncing around now today's pixel dailies is crab and so I'm gonna to try to make his melee attack which he's missing he's got all the other animations except for his melee attack so obviously he's gonna use some sort of a giant crabby crab hammer attack let's go to his melee So let's think here, what would he do for his melee? Obviously he's going to crunch with his crab. It has to be the crab closest to the claw closest to, her, to us. Yeah, Rames, if you get the voter count, you can normalize the voting across all channels, then just let people spam it. Cool, okay. Um, so after we get Twitch room size, then allow vote spamming. Twitch notes too. All right, where are my keys here? Turn on ghosting. Got the animation playing back. A crab uppercut or a crabber cut, Rames? I love it. Well, actually, well, one thing we're limited by, uh, I lost my stylus. One thing we're kind of limited by is, if you look at all the other characters, the melee, their hitboxes are all the same. So it kind of needs to be a forward-facing attack. Oh, hers is missing on this animation sheet. So we could make it a crab uppercut but it might have to be a lot more forward. So it might not end up being too much like an uppercut. We're kind of limited in that sense. So let's see. Just fighting with pixelated here so I can zoom out. It hates letting you zoom out. There we go. What's going on in chat guys? Still talking about MMO authentication, awesome, good stuff. Really nice technical conversation, I'm loving it. <clears throat> so we're gonna have to have an anticipation frame. Or maybe he takes a step back. Rames, you have to turn his whole body, yeah, and it'd be like a whole spinning move. He'd have to land. We might not have enough frames for that, totally. But maybe in Skyhook 2, when they have combos... Oh, I've never... I stopped tweeting about the streams. I totally forgot about that. Quasi.tv Skyhook 2 Arkham style brawler combat. You better believe it. You better believe it. So what can he do? He can, we can, so we're gonna try out obviously a couple of things, right? Like always, claw goes forward. Lunges forward. A 
Ahoy there, high sight. What's going on, dude? Twitch still loading. How's it going, high sight? Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. There it is. High sight. How's it going? What's going on, man? You've arrived just in time for some crabby action. We've all got crabs here on stream today. We're all crazy for crabs. This doesn't look too powerful right now. You know some good shampoo for that high sight. I don't want to know why. I don't want to know why you know good shampoo for that. Let's take a look at Finn's bite. Actually, we're going to talk about Jade for reference. So anticipation, lunge, snap, and then down. Oh, I'm trying on the wrong layer. Trying the wrong layer again. There we go. Here he starts getting back up. Oh, I kind of hate it. Miss Kapuka, and you're back. What's going on? Hi, Sight. You don't expect an uppercut slash. Yeah, I feel you. So, the, the limitation we're, the unfortunate game limitation we're facing is that all the melee attacks uh, need to be forward facing because they use the same hitbox. So, they need to be forward facing enough. But yeah, maybe there's a way we could fit um, an uppercut into that. So let's try a different one. What I like to do, if you guys have seen it before, is I'll just take what I worked on, move it away, and we're going to start all over again. Hi, size. the hitbox not full height. How are you doing your hip detection, by the way? I've never done that with frame-by-frame -frame animations. Uh, it's not a forward raycast. No, uh, so Rames, they have a... Uh, a overlap check on a frame of the animation. Uh, I can show it to you in the game. So I take a player, player prefab, drop it in here. Let me find the sprite of the player. So here is the player sprite. I'll move it out so you guys can see. Here's a player sprite. So this green box is a collider. The collider isn't actually what's detecting the collision. It uses the collider as a reference for the points of the box. So this is the melee kill box. What that does is it has this box collider, and then on a certain on the frames where it's active, it'll get the points of the box collider, and it'll do a overlap check within that rectangle. Uh, and the way it's triggered is here on the player, on its animation, on its melee attack. You can see this is the anticipation frame, and on this frame, you can see there's a trigger here attack deadly start it's an animation trigger so that tells the kill box to start activating and then for these two frames it's on and then here attack deadly end it tells the kill box to deactivate itself and then the animation ends but yeah it looks like the the kill box is the entire height of the character so i guess that we could get away with an uppercut then yeah it just runs on animation events yeah i started off doing it like code with timers and stuff but then it was much easier to just have the animation trigger it. Especially if I wanted to make it different for every character in the, in the future or something like that. Um, so yeah, maybe let's just try the uppercut thing. Uh, 
<clears throat> so let's get some references. Street Fighter Uppercut. It's the best kind of reference, a Street Fighter reference. High side, kind of like an upper swing to the head. Well, what's interesting too is that I feel like he probably should be like doing a clamp with this claw at least, right? Like this claw is probably the big weapon. The uppercut seems more like he's punching the other dude. Unless it's like a clamp at the same time. So here's a pretty great uppercut. Yeah, the cool part of the animation clip is that they always work, exactly, yeah. They always work. Kind of at the same time. Yeah, we'll see if that reads within the, with the we have two frames basically for the action, so yeah, hopefully we get that to read. Let's take, let's try. Especially if he, I mean, he's not gonna be able to turn around in the uppercut, I don't think. Here needs to be the impact frame. Yeah, it may, it may be really tough with the amount of frames we have for sure. Especially because he's not going to be able to. Sp We always start off super rough. It almost looks like he's trying to catch a baseball. They're also limited by this tiny little box as well. Frames ever cut another fully extend at the impact frame. You have a few frames afterwards to ease it out. Hmm. Well it needs to be clamped down at the impact frame. And we only have two frames to return to idle, which is the problem. So we don't really have much time to ease the uppercut because we have to start transitioning back to the idle frame. Five frames, yeah. Constraints, constraints. Trying to move him around and see if any of this works. Ms. Kapuka, thank you so much for the host. That's awesome, man. Thanks so much. Yeah, I, was, I don't know what's, what, what's not what I don't like about 
the uppercut is, while it would be cool for a fighting situation, it, um... It's weird. It's also, and the other problem is that the attack is going to knock players forward and not up, which makes it weird because it looks like he's striking them upwards, right? Like an uppercut, you expect the enemy is going to get knocked away like this, but the enemy is going to get knocked away forward because it's a forward melee attack. Put that there. Yeah, obviously worth a shot. I mean, who knows? We might end up coming back to something very similar to it in the end. All about iteration and stuffs. It took me a while to get to most of the characters' <coughs> melee attacks. And two of them had to be redone. One of them still needs to get redone. I still plan on redoing an Ara. Yeah, Rames, it's a tough motion, tough motion. I mean, you could do like a scissor thing. You could do a... Like, we could look at Finn's thing. Where Finn goes forward, and it could be like similar to the chomp. So on this frame, you imagine Finn's mouth is Grimlock's claw. And this frame, it's also the same, and we're gonna we'll adjust it as we want to. And then here it clamps, whoosh, clamps down. And then here it eases and also shrinks because of the exaggeration we're doing, and then slowly goes back to where it needs to be. I saw you got some reference for us. Cool. Give him a wooden leg. Ah, Rames, there actually is a character who already has a wooden leg. <laughs> awesome, High Sight. Yeah, this is perfect. The lobster fight. And a scorpion tail, Mystical Puka. Mystical Puka, thanks so much for the uh, straightforward scissor. That's what I'm thinking. Here we go, let's watch this fight. Zoidberg action. Great reference, great reference. Thanks. Or a completely useless Thanks. reference. Frost Nice, welcome to the crew. Thank you so much for the follow. We are working on Skyhook, a game where you fight with grappling hooks. We were trying to get some reference for a crab animation, and this is not actually have that much crab attacking in it. Oh, there it is! That's Grimlock's attack. He attacks with his feet, obviously. Nice. So I think the difference with Grimlock's is that going to be, whereas Finn's mouth was on the top, Grimlock's going to be attacking the other way. His The bottom of his claw is going to be bigger, and the top of his claw is going to be smaller. So it's almost, it's kind of like a side uppercut. Or like a clamp cut, I don't know. I don't know, leave me alone. Oh, what the hell just happened there? Holy shit. That was weird. Pixeletta just freaked out on us. There we go, let's just get rid of that layer. So here, the top again is going to be the smaller portion, the bottom is going to be the heavier portion. And it clamps. Mr. Puka, why not Zoidberg? Fuch, am I coming to Project Night? Oh, is that tonight? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't... Uh, let's see. I don't think I am. I am pretty behind right now.
Why not Zoidberg? Scrap the crap info, let's just put Zoidberg. Mm, it's not quite working how I want it to. Yeah, folks, you think about it, I think I'm going to skip Project Night because we got the arcade tomorrow too, right? So that'll be two nights in a row. That's why you come jam. But that's all I do is jam, man. All I do is jam. My middle name is Jam. And my first name is Jelly. My last name is Peanut Butter. We're going to lower all these moves. All these smooth moves. But you probably need a transition frame because his arm is just going right there. Does the motion blur solve our problem? How are you, Fudge? How's it going? Every night in a row. How's your projects coming along? How's Sabres, man? I haven't seen any updates on the lightsaber game. Hi, so you feel like this claw would have to rotate on the X? By X, do you mean this direction? X is... It actually feels a little, the action feels a little bit late, right? You meant the Z, yeah, I figured. Let me give it a little bit more angle. Damn, Foot, you still sick all week? That's another reason not to come to Project Night, man. Catch your germs. Catch your germs. You should be at home resting, man. So it should be a little bit more angled. Like this. Bust out the Saber Trainer at Project Night. Sweet. You tried to get some rest. Let me guess it didn't work. focusing on is just the claw right now because that's pretty much the most important part of this animation. It's literally the weapon. as I had hoped. Mr. Kapuka making a sprite based game in a 3D environment. You got movement down but you need to know how to do the animations. Uh, or pages to go before I start scrounging the interwebs. Uh, you're making a sprite based game in a 3D environment. So have you done any animation in uh, Unity at all Mr. Kapuka? Because I can show you how it works. Yeah, it's not super impactful, Rames, for sure. I actually hate it all. Oh, not the animations. I mean the Unity part. Like, have you do? Are you, I'm guessing you're asking how to do the animations in Unity, right? Take the animations and put them into the game. Yeah. Let me show you. So I'm gonna start a new scene, and I'm gonna get one of my animations. So I have like the treasure chest. I think is a good one. 
have anything else that animates? Yeah. Uh, it's not a good one actually. Oh, the swag. So the swag animates. So here is the sprite sheet, right? Of the swag in Capture the Swag. And it has this animation here where it pops up a coin. So I have this animation sheet of all the sprites. And then in Unity, I can take that sheet, set it to multiple here in sprite mode, go to the sprite editor, I can slice it up. So here you can change your slice, uh, change your slice mode to uh, my Cintiq has a bug. In, well, you know, has a bug with my Cintiq that doesn't show it. But anyways, you can slice it up. You can go to here. You can go slice. You can go to regular, uh, automatic, or you can do grid, and then you can set the grid level. So I did 64 by 64 for this game here. I mean, for this sprite sheet here. So it automatically slice it up by 64 by 64, right? You hit apply, you save. When you come back, now you'll see you have all these sprites generated from this one image. So then I can just take all these sprites, highlight the ones I want, I can drag them into the scene view. And when I drag it into the scene view as one group, Unity will, auto all will automatically make an animation for it. And so I can call this animation swag pop animation. So swag pop dot anim, hit save, and now you look at the swag here in the hierarchy. It has an animator, it has an animation file. Here's the animator. So we want to make sure we rename this because it's easy to get these things lost. So swag sprite, or let's call this swag test animator. Right, and we want to call this animation swag pop, cool. So now you're just barely starting a few tests prior to actual development. Um, so, uh, yeah, so now if you go to the animator window, so here in the animator window, you'll see Mechanim. This is what Mechanim looks like. Uh, so here's my swag sprite, the animator. So when I highlight the swag sprite, its animator is going to show up here in the animator window. So this is like a basic state machine. Here's the first state, swag pop. And then we also need the animation window. So you can get these by going to window animation and window animator. Uh, so in the animation window, if I select the swag sprite, you'll see I can see the timeline of the animations and I could watch them play in real time. So there's that 2D popping animation. So the bag is just kind of jiggling up and down. Is it possible to use the same animation window thing in 3D instead of 2D? Uh, if you mean the animator, yeah, it's the same animator. Mechanim works for 2D and for 3D. Uh, so now say we want to give this another animation. Uh, we can go here to where it says swag pop. We can create a new clip. We can call that swag test chest, right? Now I need my project window because I can't see shit. Uh, now I'm going to open up another set of sprites. So let's go to, tr uh, actually, let's go to swag. So now we have this swag land animation, right? So I'm going to grab this frame and I'm going to grab this frame and I'm going to grab this frame. So you can just grab whatever frames you want here in your project. And I can just drag those into the animation and now boom we have an animation now it's playing super fast because it's 60 frames per second so I'm gonna put it at 12 frames per second and now we have a landing animation for the swag so now the swag has swag pop and swag whatever now if you look at the animator it has two states it's got swag pop and it's got this new swag test chest so if you want, so when you play the game, let's put this on screen. Uh, I don't want to save the scene. So we've played the game. You'll notice the swag just stays in that one state, right? Let's grow it, let's increase the size. So you can see the swag just stays in one state, right? Now if we create a transition from here to here, once it's done, it'll go back to the other size. Right, so I accidentally recorded my scale here in the animation. So if you look at the animation now, for swag test, it recorded my scale as I was doing it, so I gotta undo that. Cool, no problem, Ms. Kapuka. We're gonna head back into Pixel Edit. So this attack's not working either. It is about 
And that means we are out of time on this animation, and it is time for, I think, everyone else's favorite part of the day. Shoop-a-da-pop. boop We're going to make a big old canvas here. See so if you guys don't know how this part of the day works. This is the good old fashioned. Who can guess it? Who in chat can guess it? It's the cooldown sketch. It's every day at the end of the stream, and the stream is about to end. I will take ideas from chat and draw whatever it is you guys want me, want me to draw within reasons. This is what we did yesterday on, on stream. We made a dog scorpion, dragon parrot cat, and a badass banana. So if you guys want to see your drawing on screen or your idea turned into a drawing, start throwing out ideas in chat right now. I'll grab the first couple that are awesome and we'll start drawing them. What do we got? What do we got? Any good ideas? Waiting for the stream delay. Always awkward stream delay. Grimrock sharpening his claw. Buffalo with a lightsaber. Oh, I love that. Pet Rock. Frostnix. We got all right. We got some cool ideas to start. So Grimlock sharpening his claw. Buffalo with the lightsaber and a pet rock. Love it. Walking layers? What's a walk? What's a layers? Let's save this. This is a PSD. It's going to be sketched. Today's the 14th, I'm hoping. So let's start with the buffalo with the lightsaber. Let's grab some references. Grimlock, Grimlock sharpening his claw with his pet rock. Oh, that's so cruel. That's so cruel. Let's do a buffalo. Uh, oh my god, this buffalo is so grumpy. Here's a buffalo. We're going to need a reference for a Jedi. Here's Obi-Wan Kenobi's costume from the old movies, which is pretty much what Luke wears in the new movies, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we need Grimlock. Got Grimlock over here. And we had Pet Rock. Oh, Walking Mountains. All right, and we got a mountain. And a pet rock. All right, we got a pretty serious one today. Let's see how far we actually get. So I'm gonna start with the one that excites me the most, which is a fucking Jedi Master Buffalo. Uh, let's do, let's do it, let's do it. Let's get our buffalo head in here. His eyes are going to be somewhere around there. He's got this big old snout. It looks like they have like beards or something. Oh man, I might end up just spending my whole time drawing this guy. It's gonna be freaking sweet. Uh, he's gonna have to have ears. I'm gonna make his ears point down so he looks cooler. Ears pointing up always looks a little bit cuter, I think. Range left for five minutes, and now we got buffaloes with lightsabers. You better believe it. That's what this stream's all about. Crazy stuff. Switch my pencil to eraser. Or my brush to eraser. Pencil. Or not pencil. Let's 
Where the hell is their mouth? I struggled with that yesterday too. Shrink this guy down. Getting too carried away with his head. But we're just gonna probably steal this Obi-Wan Kenobi pose. Buffalo's up are gonna pretty much be a Minotaur, right? To have to be in this pose. Guy's yeah, gonna be massive. It's gonna have massive arms. Looks kind of like Beast from Beauty and the Beast. We are doing our cooldown sketch for the day, guys. A Buffalo with the lightsaber. So I am raining here from Buffalo, New York. Seems only fitting, only fitting. He's gonna have some teeny tiny legs, I know that's for sure. You guys probably can tell from my character designs that I love putting teeny tiny legs on my giant characters. Finn has teeny tiny legs. Grimlock has teeny tiny legs. Let's move this text over here because no one can see it. Oh no, where'd it go? Any, any st super super mega Star Wars fans in the house want to correct me on anything I'm getting wrong with this guy? Well, this arm is way too low. That lightsaber is going to be pointing down. Sheesh. Aside from it being a buffalo high sight, <laughs> I don't know. There could be some buffalo aliens or buffalo like bison like aliens in the Star Wars universe, couldn't there? Maybe in the expanded universe. Fish? Did somebody say fish? Hey, Frontsman! Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the crew. You are watching Cooldown Sketch for today's game development stream. We are drawing a buffalo with a lightsaber. And or a giant dildo. It's this hand. Hmm. It does look way cooler rotated down. I kind of hate the lightsaber hand right now. Hi, so you're out of here. No problem, man. Thanks for hanging out today. Really appreciate it. Hopefully I'll catch you on your next stream. Buffaloes have hooves? Let's see. Take your eyesight. Buffalo feet. Buffaloes do have hooves. How do you hold a lightsaber with hooves? Tonight at 7. Awesome, man. I'll try to catch it.
Jedi Master. Jedi Buffalo Master. Need to give him his teeny tiny legs now. What kind of pants do Jedi's wear? Just like long pants? Jedi pants. They're just puffy puff puff pants. Oh, they usually wear boots. Sometimes they wear boots. Uh, I like this one. I like the this thing. Looks like he's a bird. Looks like he's got bird feet. Cow's foot, I guess. What's up, guys? We are doing our cooldown sketch for the day. Wrapping up the stream very soon. Drawing a buffalo as a Jedi Master. Does he have a bunch of... Oh, he's a hood, right. Jedi robes. Look for some more reference. I can't tell if there's like an inside part. No, it doesn't look like there is. Oh, there's like a tunic part. So you don't see their crotch. That, I guess it depends on the Jedi, it looks like. Obi-Wan Kenobi had like a this kind of a thing. I don't like it. Still haven't actually given him his lightsaber, funny enough. Because I can't I'm have him struggling with the hand. Looking for some reference of somebody holding a lightsaber.
trying to think about the, what angle is going to look best for this lightsaber. Could be just down, like the original image. about that angle just keeps seeing seeming wrong. Maybe it's just about the way I'm drawing his hand. I feel like I'm getting it. his hand looks like back there. something more along these lines. But not so high up. He only has two fingers. actually look like it's got a cone thingy for some of them How are you guys doing? What's going on in chat? Everybody go quiet after that discussion about networking. Alright. 
there's our Jedi Buffalo. We gotta give him a pet rock. Warner, what's going on, dude? So you guys know in Photoshop you can right click on an image to find its layer. And then he's gonna have a little pet rock that's also a Jedi Master. This would be like our badass banana from yesterday. Rame's putting off writing a speech. Ah, uh, no worries, man. That's definitely a lot more important if it's for your dad's birthday. Got Pet Rock. Terra looks so stupid. He's gonna be the rival to yesterday's um, badass banana. He's gonna be a little Rayman character. You know what, we're just going to leave him as a rock. Just a really angry rock. And somebody asked for, I'm going to erase Grimlock, we're not going to do him. It's going to be too complicated of a sketch. Someone asked for a walking mountain, I believe. guys are so angry. We'll make the, you know, since the mountain's already angry, we'll make the pet rock happy. The mountain's obviously angry because global warming is melting all of his ice caps. It looks more like a volcano. is of course wearing jeans and he's wearing skinny jeans that are too tight that's why he's so pissed mountain costume. Alright, there is our apparently 
Buffalo with the lightsaber, Walking Mountain, and their pet rock. Alrighty, hope you guys enjoyed today's stream and today's super silly cooldown sketch. Buffalo with lightsaber, his pet rock, and the mountain who's following them around, even though they got a restraining order against him. his mouth is bothering me. There we go. Awesome guys. Thank you so much for hanging out today guys. It was awesome. It was a good time. It was a good time. The still expression he's just like, how did I get stuck here with this rock and this mountain? What version of the Star Wars universe is this exactly? Oh man. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. We're going to call the stream there. It's 517. Hope you guys had a good time. We got a lot more Twitch stuff into the game. That's been good. Next time we'll continue the Grimlock animation. And have some more crazy crazy fun. As always, if you guys enjoyed the stream, please don't forget to follow. The stream is every Monday to Friday. Oops, where's the webcam? The stream is every Monday to Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. It's been a blast. Why is the pet rock mentally challenged? He's a pet rock. He doesn't have a brain, man. Rocks don't have no brains. Put you gotta send you that Jedi. For sure, man. I'll save this out for you right now. So yeah, man, I hope you guys, I hope I'll see you guys again next stream, which is tomorrow. And don't forget, Fridays here on the stream are giveaway Fridays, or Friday giveaway. Meaning if you come through tomorrow, you have the chance to win a Steam key for Skyhook. So definitely come through, check that out. Let me save this image out for Futch. Thanks, to, oh, thanks so much for hanging out, Reims. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Narcos, thanks so much. I'll see you guys tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern. That's like 12 p.m., 11 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Central, and I think it's like 7 p.m. GMT. I don't know, I looked it all up today. Narcos, you want it, you want it. You better show up. We'll do a giveaway tomorrow, guys. We'll probably do a giveaway at the beginning or at the end. I'm not sure yet, we'll figure it out. But I'll see you guys then. Thank you guys again so much for hanging out. It was awesome. Really appreciate it. See you guys tomorrow.